you know, it, it took us a lot to really just be like, yo, let's do this. Yep. Um, and we kind of took that mindset and just ran with it. Um, we went, you know, two years with just straight DIY touring, trying to be on the road essentially every other month. Uh, the time home was just enough money for us to save money for us to be back out. Yeah. Um, and in hopes that, you know, bigger things would come and, and the reward would be there. Um, so, yeah, 2016, you know, pin joins and we're moving. We have a couple DIY tours <laughs> under our belt. And, you know, now we see the full potential because now we have a full lineup. Yes. Uh, what does DIY mean to you? Like, are we talking like house shows, basements? We're we talking like DIY in terms of booking yourself. Like, so DIY, DIY? I don't it's know. funny I we always, literally talked about this. The other some day. people just say DIY, and I yeah. feel like they don't even know what it means. But for me, I literally say like, do it yourself. Yeah. Like I don't know, like it, whether that means a house or a show or this or that. Like you could DIY anything. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, like essentially, no management, no okay. label, no agent. <clears throat> um, I want to say that it went down to the detail with him booking it, where he booked our full US. Like a full month long, full country U.S. tour, booked all of that first one. Then ever. booked all of the locals on of the on those shows. Jesus, because it's his way. One, he knew all the bands. He yeah. was and he was learning about the scenes from each state, which helped us too. Because when we show up, he was finding the better the better local bands, the better bands that are sick, the bands that are our style too, our stature, the yeah. same ones that are trying to tour. Trying to spread that like unified feeling, you like you were saying within the band to bands now, like f bands with bands, you know, like creating like this group of bands that we agree, like we believe in as well, and that we can all kind of come up together, essentially. Yeah. Um, and also, people you want to hang out. But with, I will. Like, when you're... I'm not gonna lie. You know, with booking DIY at a young age, like I ran into a lot of problems. I tried to I'm cut sure. corners here and there. I pissed off some people. I'm sure. Um, probably didn't <laughs> handle business correctly. A lot of Facebook messages. Um, you know, and with, even with the bands, you know, I had promoters come back and say like, you're booking the show with me. Like, what is my job then? Mm -hmm. You know, like I've actually never had someone come to me and say, these are the bands we want. Um, so, you know, I, I learned from that, you yeah. know, and moving forward, I think it was cool that we were able to kind of be a little pushy and do it our way, but then learn how it all kind of like will come full circle and be like, okay, maybe this isn't the right way to do it, but you have the right idea. Yep. Um, and from there, we were able to grow, you know. As you reflect on those, I'm interested, you kind of alluded to things not going well. And so I'll, 100%, uh, I'm yeah. curious of one of the, yeah, one time where things didn't go well. And my example here always, uh, the context of like booking and kind of being pushy with people. Uh, when I first get into shooting shows, I'm photographing shows primarily. And I'm photographing three or four shows a week. Like I, I did 100 shows my first year, which is something that like I... Uh, crazy, crazy, crazy in hindsight Congrats. to look back. That's it's like, crazy. And it wasn't 100 times that people said, hey, come do this. It was 99 times of me being like, I'm going to go do that. And then maybe one time someone said, hey, come yeah, to the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And so at that thing, it was, yeah, how do I get my name out? And part of that was going to shows. And then it's like, well, now that I'm at the shows, I've taken the photos. Like, how do I make people see the photos? There's 2,000 people at the Palladium. How do I get them to my Instagram? And so to me, it was business cards. I printed out business cards, like my social media on them. And I would bring stacks and like fucking thousands of these things to the yeah. show. Yeah. And my mentality was always like, no one is leaving here without talking to me and without getting one of these things. And in certain, yeah, I guess the, the good part of that was like, I did get to go around. I met a lot of people. I met a lot of bands I'm still working with now. Uh, and I think in the context of like people at the venue, it's like I knew that if you're at the front row of the Palladium, like you might not look at my business card now, but if every time you're at the Palladium, I am also there. I'm saying, hey, I took photos. Like eventually you're going to go look at these photos and this thing will trickle. The flip side there is like, I'm sure I pissed off a lot of motherfucking people, right? Like, I was just walking up to anyone I could see and going, hi, sorry to interrupt. My name is Peter. I'm taking photos tonight. If you want to see, here's where you can see. And kind of to your point, you're talking about, like, looking at the bookers and, like, uh, worrying about stepping on toes because you kind of booked the show. It yeah, seems like yeah. a similar thing to me where it's like, yeah, I attribute a lot of my momentum to that, to going literally door to door, for lack of a better term, at people and being like, I am Peter. I am Peter. I am Peter. But yeah, it sounds like you probably ran into some similar adversity with booking the show thing where it's like, yeah, it, there was a lot of good, but is there a time looking back where you're like, oh, fuck, I shouldn't have handed out business cards to everyone Honestly, there. when I look back at it, I, like, I just look at it with like, <clears throat> it's different with like context. Yeah. You know, when you're new and you're this young guy, I'd like to think that when you are messing up, when someone's correcting you, it's mm -hmm. more just constructive criticism yeah. and it's for you to like figure it out, you know? Yep. Um, so I think without making wrong moves, you're not going to figure out which moves are the right ones, you know? So yes. I think um, striking out with certain promoters or maybe not handling uh, an email the right way or whatever it may have been, 
um, you know, definitely didn't do it again. Yes. You know, so that's that's kind of the biggest thing there. Yeah. Um, nothing that was like detrimental to the band, but yeah. more so just us being young and hungry. Yeah. You know, and willing to take a chance. I think is the other piece. I think we're all we're all desperate for our art, but it's like, are you willing to book? Are you willing to reach out to all these local bands in the scene and figure out who the good local bands are in fucking Wyoming or wherever like bullshit state you had to stop it on the way to like yeah. the good place? Like, I'm sure the it was easy to find L.A. locals, but yeah, I'm sure it's some of the South Dakotas or wherever it was like, yeah. And you're the guy who's in charge of trying to find the good band there so that that show can go off without a hitch and be a place that you guys can look forward to like ending up in exactly, instead of being exactly. just the middle of nowhere that you're stuck in. Yeah, right yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Um, hell yeah. So when did it start to become real? So this is kind of our local touring. Yeah, full national tour. It sounds like it sounds like that's real, but it sounds like there's still another step of like legitimacy that can be gained here. Like when does this thing start to gain momentum from sax booking stuff to things happening more organically or more? I don't know. Yeah, com opportunities come from the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, first off, just getting sick of renting a van. That's yeah. one thing. So yeah, like the first few tours we just rented from green vans yep. uh, and we saw how much money uh, it really was with how frequent we wanted to be out. Um, so that was, was definitely one. Yeah, thing. it was definitely like the first real thing we needed to like do to be like, all right, we can do this constantly now because like if we buy it, we own it. And then like we just take care of it. Yeah. So once we were able to solidify owning a van, then we were able to be more, you know, go, go, go to go and get on the road and everything like that. So I think from there on. I think your booking and the shows that we played honestly was a big part of getting involved in all those separate scenes around the country, even just regionally, you know, in the Northeast and the South, like yeah. just gaining, knowing people and playing the shows. And then over time, you know, people just post videos, people see stuff over time. And it's like, it just can build to something as long as you just keep trying to do it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty crazy because like throughout all that time of us doing that touring, um, we were kind of trying to find like our own identity still. So I wouldn't even be able to say like you're saying, when did this become real? You know, Ryan went from bass to guitar to vocals. And before he was our vocalist, um, you know, we had three fill-ins, uh, Eduardo, uh, Moak, even from Lorna filled oh, in for yeah. a show, you know, like we were just <laughs> calling in homies just to fill in for a show. Um, and we finally landed with our one good friend, Steven Mannix. Um, and he filled in and held it down for a very long time. But it was really hard to like push the band yeah. and like grow when it was like, this isn't our guy, but we're just kind of like, you know, maybe, who knows? Um, and, you know, when Ryan became the vocalist, it was, I think, what, 2018, the beginning? 2017. 2017. January 1st, we announced That's that. when things started to get like real because okay. we, we saw the promos of us four. We were like four piece, everyone's rocking. We have our members solidified. And, you know, we had all of that steam from doing those DIY tours to where now there was a demand for the next move. Um, so the path kind of like lit up as we were as we were moving, like by itself. Um, and we kind of knew what we needed to do next. And I was just like, put out a banger record. Yep. Um, and then, you know, with that comes, you know, do we want management? Do we want this? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we work with plenty of managements um, through those years of even DIY, like kind of in and out, like loosely with people. Um, just to get advice and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we quickly learned about, you know, what the do's and don'ts are with, you know, certain managers and certain agents and just kind of how like certain people conduct business. Yeah. Um, you know, what we want for ourselves, you know, we kind of know what we want. Um, so, you know, we started to mess around with some people and didn't really land on anyone until uh, pinup artist management came along. And once we had a management, the record was kind of like, you know, in our near future to write and stuff. Um, we were like, let's just keep rolling. Let's just <clears throat> keep touring. And now when we have this record, it'll be time to fully like full send it. Let's shop it around. Let's yeah. let's try to make some noise.